Savio Vega is an interesting character. I, I I work with him just a little bit in uh, MLW, right? MLW, that's right. Pretty cool guy. Wait, uh, here we go again. Scott Hall with maybe the best working punch in the business. No doubt. Man alive. He was so good at it. When, uh, when Jeff Jarrett walked out on the WWF, or do you remember people talking about that in WCW at all? Yeah. What was the narrative you were hearing? What do you remember hearing about it way back when? I remember, I remember most of the people going, Hey, he ain't putting up with any bullshit. Hmm. You know, because back then, and, and I'm sure it, I'm sure it still remains today, but it's not as pronounced. But back then, there was a very, very, um, very well known hatred for the WWF back then from WCW. Like and I the, guess from the Evil Empire, maybe. Yes, and I guess it stems from the fact that, you know, uh, the WWF stopped the territories, kind of or tried to put all the promoters and was very successful out of business back then. And that still was, that taste was still in a lot of people's mouth. Uh, that's gone now because of time, time, you know, changes all, but, uh, yeah, there was a hatred for the WWF. So when that happened, everybody was kind of gleeful about it. Not everybody, but many people were, it was, it was, it was uh, out there and, I mean, let, let's think about it. Where the territories ended when? At WrestleMania? The first WrestleMania? Well, or... no. I mean, it, it, it didn't exactly work like that. I mean, the Memphis territory persevered on and on and on through the 90s. Uh, but I hear you. You know, by 88, most of the territories were, were pretty we're dry. Gone. Right. But local wrestling, like, like Bob Geigel, like championship wrestling from Florida, like continental wrestling, uh, like Don Owens, that stuff may have gone on, but that stuff wasn't, wasn't as big a draw anymore. That's right. Yeah. I, I think it's probably a situation where, you know, it's the early eighties. I would even say, you know, 84, 85, mm -hmm. that's probably when it starts to really taper. Yeah. And that, and that's why in my career, I I'm so happy. I started when I did, because when I started territories were still a thing. So I'm just curious, how come Vince gets the heat for killing the territories, but Crockett doesn't get the heat for sending Ric Flair out all over the country to recruit talent and bring them back to JCP? Uh, I, I can't answer that with the exception of Vince started going with his show national and his show was, I've, we've brought this up many times. His show was so much better than everybody else's, uh, that, uh, television uh, program directors television general managers looked at Vince's show and looked at, let's say Bob Geigel's one camera shoot show and said, fuck, there's no comparison. Geigel's done. We'll take the Vince stuff. Uh, Todd Pettengill is pretty active here, isn't he? Man. He's, um, he's a great hype man. And of course this is the uh, supporting band for double J, but don't you take a look on the right side of your screen. Fellow on base with the big smile back there in the vest. That's Jim Johnston who did all of the WWF themes in this era. Wow. And Jim has, um, he's talked about this. He, he does not enjoy performing live in front of people. It gives huh. him anxiety. He's just not comfortable with it. Now he can do whatever you can possibly imagine with almost any s set of instruments in private, which is why we got all those great theme songs. But as far as performing on a stage in front of people that was rare for him. And he was not comfortable with that, but there he is. One of the few times that we're going to see that oh, we see that. the former Michael PS Hayes in the background right now. How would you describe Michael's look here? Uh, he looks like, uh, like your barber in a Nashville barbershop. I can see that. Yeah. Come on in. Come on in. I'll, I'll, I'll cut you down. So that's Matt Coon right there. Um, and, and that's Bam Bam Bigelow, a very young Billy Gunn. Uh -huh. oh, we're going to hear from Matt Coon here. Okay. What do I hear from Matt Coon? What do you think Matt Coon's saying? Well, here's the deal. I'm, I'm pissed off at everybody. Should have let Tony Schiavone die. Never use my music again. <laughs> hey, that's Brian Clark. We just had him on adfreeshows.com. It's my first 
you know, I've somehow managed to, in my little wrestling journey here, Tony, meet almost everybody. But when I did my interview with Brian Clark, that's the first time we ever spoke. He's one of the few guys that I've never ran across. Wow. You spent some time with him in WCW. What yeah. can you tell us about Brian Clark? Uh, just easy going guy and, uh, was, was so appreciative of getting the push with, with chronic. And, uh, I like Brian a lot. I really did. And I'm sure that you, uh, feel the same way after talking to him. Pretty cool. Such a nice guy. Yeah. I don't know, man, mountain rock at all. I, uh, man, look at Vince with this outfit. Hmm. That's not I, something you expect to see. No, not at all. But of course we're Nashville it up. It's almost like, uh, look at, uh, Jerry, the King Lawler there. It looks like he's, uh, uh, a bartender in Texas. I, uh, I enjoyed seeing Bam Bam Bigelow there. You know, we, we talk a lot about, man, that guy just looks like a wrestler. Bam Bam Bigelow looks like a movie villain. Mm -hmm. And now of course, uh, one of my favorite moments in the whole world. Okay. Oh man, this is such a big moment in, in Bruce and I's fandom as mm -hmm. part of our podcast, something to wrestle because Bruce loved singing this silly song with my baby tonight. Oh yeah. I've, I've heard him sing it live on stage shows. And, uh, he's, uh, here he comes. Ain't he great? There's double J walking out on the set. The roadie introduces him. Now, normally I hate when there's a concert in the middle of a, of a pay-per-view. I think it takes away. Of course I'm not know. here to see that, but this is not really a concert. This isn't Limp Biscuit or Kid Rock doing their thing in the middle of a doggone wrestling pay-per-view. This is one of the wrestling characters doing a wrestling angle. And they're trying to do the Millie Vanilli thing here. The idea being Jeff is going to lip sync and the real life road dog, Brian James, he'll be the one singing the song. And that was going to be the big story and pay off and reveal. I kind of like that. What do you think of that story and that creative? I, I, that's pretty cool. I like that. That's something different. Yes. You needed something different. Everybody needs something different. I was told one time, uh, by a boss in, uh, my wrestling journey, looking around, he said, no idea is a bad idea. Let's throw it out there. You got to come up with something, right? And you know what? That's how they came up with the Tony Storm angle with Mariah May. Mm. Let's think of something. And everybody put their heads together. And obviously, RJ said he had a lot to do with that. And he uh, was a very talented kid. I have a lot of time for him. And to me, the Tony Storm Mariah May angle is one of the best angles we've ever done in AEW. Well, I don't think there's any question of that. Yeah. I can't wait to see the payoff either. We're just yeah. uh, weeks away from all in. T handful of tickets still available at AEWTIX.com.